Hello everyone, Jacob here and I welcome you to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, a series analyzing various engines in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Today's episode was a bit influenced by the May 17th ban list, so without further ado, let us swing into action so we can carve the arc of victory with the Performer Power Engine. However, before we do, remember to like, comment and subscribe if you like this type of content. I'm on the road to 1000 subscribers and you can help me reach that goal. There is something special planned for that milestone with more information coming in the future. Now, back to the episode. Performer Pals, or as they know in the OCG land, Entermates, are an archetype wielded by both Sakakis in the Arc 5 universe. The first set of cards was revealed in the Legendary Duelist Alliance set all the way back in August 2014, with the deck getting its best support in January 2016 set Breakers of Shadow, creating a new Tier 0 deck that was up for about 3 weeks. Afterwards, Konami published an adjusted list, not a ban list, but an adjusted list, which was still active for higher level events and there would be no permanent changes until the release of the April 2016 ban list which solidified the changes made by the adjusted list. With that little history lesson done, what about the Perform PAL engine? Well, that was released in parts and has been unplayable since uh, August 2016 due to banning of one of the engine's main cards. However, that card just came back from exile from the land of magical scientists, maximum seas and more, making the engine playable again. So, how does the engine work and look like? It's a rather simple release since it's built of three cards, one of which you can change depending on the deck. So let's look at the two that are required for the engine and one that can be used for additional utility. This is the main card of the engine which makes it actually work. You can search out another perform power monster, like a pendulum monster of a high scale, on the same turn it's set in your pendulum zone. This card alone gives you access to pendulum summoning, which is one of, if not the, strongest mechanic in the game. Joker is the main searcher for the engine, it allows you to grab monkey board, giving the user an instant scale for a pendulum summon. A lizard draw is a utility higher scale monster. Its pendulum effect gives the user a draw of an additional card after destroying it, providing extra consistency for the deck. When it comes to the build of the engine, it's another of those very simple ones, especially since the ban list somewhat dictates the amount of engine cards usable. That's why we're playing three copies of Skullcrabat Joker, our one available copy of Monkey Board, and one or two copies of the other scale. I suggest playing one copy of the higher scale, but with Lizard Draw, using an additional one allows you to draw due to its pendulum effect while still maintaining the ability to pendulum summon. One of the most obvious pros of this engine comes from its ability to easily provide the player with a full pendulum scale. Additionally, there's the deck thing aspect with the amount of searches and the draw thanks to lizard draw. The size is also one of its good points since 6 cards at most doesn't take too much deck space allowing for the usage of other various engines. When it comes to the downside of the engine, the most detrimenting one is the engine's somewhat reliance on normal summoning. This makes it not the best choice for various decks, additionally there's no clear advantage provided. Don't get me wrong, pendulum is still one of the better summoning mechanics but in order to take full advantage of it, you need to have enough monsters in order to pendulum summon. There's also the engine's ability to draw a card, but if not for the access to the pendulum mechanic, playing part of desires would provide much more draw power and deck thinning. The engine is quite easy to use, so I think it can see some experimentation in almost every deck. However, like I mentioned previously, it somewhat relies on Skullcrabat's Joker's monster effect, which triggers upon its normal summon. Therefore, I strongly advise against using it in anything that relies lies on that mechanic. Other than that, go crazy! When it comes to price of the engine, it actually varies. Like Monkey Board. It had two printings, one in Breaker of Shadow as a common, and in OTS Tournament Pack 1 as a super rare. The common fetches an average price of about one and a half dollar, while the super rare goes for about ten. Skullcrabat Joker, on the other hand, had four printings. The cheapest one is a common from a legendary dragon decks, fetching about one and a half buck again. While the most expensive is, you guessed it, the super rare from the OTS Tournament Pack 1, which goes for about seven bucks. Outside of those two, there are also the other scales you have to take into account when it comes to the cost of the engine, and that part depends on what you want it to do. That will be it for today. What do you think about the Perform Play engine? Would you use it in a deck? Does it make... Let's go! Remember to leave your answers and any other comments below. This has been Jacolo, and I'm signing out. Peace!